Mafia is back in a huge way for 2020, and the centerpiece has got to be Mafia Definitive Edition, releasing on September 25th of this year. Today, we're here with studio head and creative director Hayden Blackman to take a deep dive into what makes Mafia Definitive Edition so special. Hayden, we're getting close to launch. How are you doing? Pretty good. So I've played a good chunk of the game, and it's incredibly impressive. You're seeing how far it has come since 2002 uh, on your screen, but walk me through, you know, what was the motivation behind returning to the franchise's roots, and, and what draw you personally to Lost Heaven and Tommy Angelo? Yeah, sure. So um, really the motivation for doing the uh, Mafia remake and building it from the ground up really came from the team internally. We have a number of veterans from the original Mafia game, um, you know, some folks that worked on all three Mafia games. And as we were ramping up um, an original IP internally at Hangar 13, we knew we had um, some cycles to work on something else. And a number of, of these folks kind of came out and said, hey, well, why don't we look at remaking the original Mafia? And for me personally, it was really exciting because it was an opportunity for us to, you know, retell this story using everything we've learned, um, you know, both from a kind of uh, storytelling perspective, but also from a technology perspective, you know, since the original release and, and really kind of recreate this experience. Um, and then also have all three Mafia games out at the same time on the same platform. So you could experience the, the whole trilogy, you know, together and kind of one swap, uh, shot. Yeah, that's such a such a cool experience and the city looks gorgeous the game looks gorgeous we get a good amount of remasters and remakes these days but this is specifically mafia definitive edition uh, from what i've played it's definitely much more than a simple remaster but in your eyes what makes this game the definitive mafia experience and, and why was it important to go beyond just a simple graphical up res well we really wanted to rebuild it from the, the ground up uh, partly because we had to there was no way to take the original game and, and just up res it um, and be able to kind of get the graphical fidelity that, you know, we need or want, um, you know, given uh, today's consoles and, and kind of PC capabilities. So we knew from the outset we were going to have to rebuild everything from the ground up. Once we kind of wrapped our heads around that, then it became, okay, how can we make sure that, you know, we're taking the, the tone and the feel and the story and the set pieces from the original um, and really doing them justice and expanding upon them where we could um, and making sure that this is the... The game that the team that worked on the original, you know, really had in their mind's eye, you know, back then and in 2002, and now have the, the capability to realize. Yeah, it's it's remarkable seeing these fan favorite characters and locations and missions in the new engine. It's, it's been 18 years. How did you guys go about staying true to that original release while also updating the systems and the gameplay to to really fit 2020? To be honest, it was a really difficult balancing act. I think that from our perspective, the best way to approach it was to look at what are the things that were kind of immutable or the things we knew we didn't want to change about the original. And a lot of it comes back to that spine of the story, who the characters are, the the themes and the tone of, of that original game, obviously the setting, the time period, um, all those things were, were things we knew we could kind of hang everything else on. Those could become the spine of, of the game. And then beyond that, we made a list of all the things that we wanted to improve and we wanted to kind of update to modern standards. So driving was one of those things. Gunplay was another. And we were able to take everything we learned um, and all the systems we built for Mafia 3 um, and apply them to Mafia, the definitive edition, in order to bring things up to more modern standards from that, that perspective. Um, but I, I really think that it, it comes back to making sure we're staying true to the tone with everything that we do and, and true to the, the kind of feel and the atmosphere of the original game. Yeah, we're, we're seeing a little of that feel now as Tommy sneaks his way through and the alligator. We had the alligator. I, I think that that's probably a prop. That we I was gonna say, is that out, were, were all these animals in the original version? Uh, probably not. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think the intent with this, though, because it's an out of the way motel. Mm -hmm. The intent in the original ver version is that it did have kind of this more rustic feel. So right. uh, there probably was some of this uh, in the original. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, and again, the team does this all the time, just because it's kind of fun. Um, and uh, it, it doesn't take anything away, but it, it helps add um, uh, some nice touches. But that out, that stuffed alligator, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a prop from Mafia 3 that was kind of <laughs> snuck in here. You know, you were heavily involved in the development of Mafia 3, obviously. This game's a totally different era, totally different type of Mafia. What were some of the things that you took from that development to, to build upon for this game? And, and were there any things that you had to make sure to avoid given the differences in, in the two time periods? 
Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, we did take the driving model and um, kind of our, our gunplay model from Mafia 3, but we adapted those for, you know, Mafia, the definitive edition based on the time period. So from a driving model perspective, for example, we made a lot of adjustments to make sure that the cars feel like cars from, you know, the 1930s, from this kind of prohibition era um, America. So um, that was one example. And then from a gunplay standpoint, um, that again was another balancing act for us because we wanted to capture the sense that Tommy is a cab driver that kind of falls in with the mob um, and over time does get better at, you know, kind of using his weapon, but that's really driven by the, the player getting better. Um, that's in sharp contrast to, to Lincoln and Clay from Mafia 3, who's a trained soldier. And, and so just from the outset, there's a very different vibe with combat. We wanted to make combat feel a little bit more lethal. Um, in uh, Mafia, the Definitive Edition, we wanted to make sure that you were thinking about when you were using cover, um, when you know, you're reloading, when you're blind uh, firing. But at the same time, again, it's a balancing act because we still want to make headshots really fun. We still want to make sure that you can progress through the game and experience the story. We want to make sure that gunplay is satisfying. And then I, I love, I mean, one of the things I was super happy with from Mafia 3 were all the kind of um, uh, death animations and the variety that we were able to get there. Um, there's just something about when you get that headshot, the guy just kind of falling to his knees. So we were able to take a lot of those lines and apply them here too, so. And you still have those very vicious finishing moves. Tommy still, he may not be a soldier, but he still gets a little wild when it, when it yeah. comes to that. He does have a little bit of an edge to him. And, and again, that was one of the big learnings from Mafia 3. Those, those finishing moves are fun and they're a great payoff, um, you know, for uh, that kind of melee encounter. So we wanted to make sure we brought those back too. Absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of Tommy Angelo, you know, you mentioned he's this cab driver. He gets quickly involved with the mafia, the Salieri family. Things kind of spiral from there. To you, what makes Tommy a great mobster, and, and why is his tale so relatable and compelling? So I think it all starts with him being, a, you know, hopefully a compelling character. And for me, one of the things that drew me into the story originally was um, the opening of, of the game, which again, this isn't really giving anything away. But when you first meet Tommy, he's actually waiting in a diner for. A detective and you realize that he's going to basically try and make a deal with this detective to uh, essentially sell out the mob in order to protect his family and i think you know that desire to protect your family protect your loved ones is, is something that most people can relate to it's a very primal goal um but you know tommy's torn about it because he knows what it means in terms of, of kind of betraying the mob um so i think from the outset you know again he's a relatable character you can kind of understand him um, here, you know, we can kind of see a moment of Tommy talking with, with Norman. Um, and then from there, we kind of flash back and you see Tommy kind of almost fallen in with the mob by accident. And he gets kind of enticed by the mob and he gets drawn in by, you know, kind of these two guys that become his best friends and by Salieri, the crime boss, who is more like a paternal figure, at least initially, than your traditional, you know, I'm going to crack everybody's skulls with a, a baseball bat mob, mob boss. So, um which I think, again, is kind of relatable. You know, we all want to kind of live that that good life and it would be fun to hang out with your friends and, you know, uh, play around on the edges of, of kind of the law. Um, but, you know, Tommy realizes, you know, as, as things progress that there is a dark side to this and that, you know, he may be in over his head, which I also think is, is relatable and is a compelling story. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that, we, you know, we're building a, a, a kind of a mafia world here too so as players go throughout the the world they'll recognize some brands and some signage you know we have the big break cigarettes which you know are in um, mafia 3 either as well and so there's things like that that i think are nice little callbacks one of my favorite things in the game are the um uh, collectibles so we have uh cigarette cards that you can collect those are so cool um, yeah so they're like you know baseball cards but they, they reveal the kind of identity and, and backstory of a mobster from the Mafia franchise. So they're not all, um, you know, just related to Mafia 1, although, you know, uh, several are. Um, there are others that you can find as you go throughout the game that give you greater insight into other characters that build the franchise and characters that are maybe only referenced in passing. I think, that's, I think it's really fun then if you played Mafia 3 first and now you're going back to Definitive Edition to see that the universe is interconnected in that way. Yeah, it's all cohesive, and there's there's characters that again uh, we reference in Mafia Three that were originally referenced in Mafia One or Two, and then they, they kind of get called back again, and then new characters now that we created in Mafia Three that we can actually reference now in Mafia One because of you know because we're remaking it. So right. That's uh, it's super exciting from that standpoint. Yeah, I, I love that the game starts with you know the scenes, the intimate moments with the detective, and you kind of get to really recognize wow these characters look so much better. The game has 
taken leaps since the original version. Um, I went back and actually watched the gameplay side by side, and it's it's insane. You guys went and found an all-new cast, you re-recorded the entire VO, you even added some dialogue, you mo capped all the actors. As both a developer and a writer, how does this new level of expressiveness affect the storyline and kind of the impact that the characters and the plot has on the player? Well, I, I think it's incredibly liberating as a, as a developer. I mean, we're able to basically tell the story with more nuance um, than maybe we could in the past. We're able to convey things, you know, without using dialogue. You know, you can use a, a look or a gesture or body language to convey something. Um, we can do a lot more with subtext. You know, the characters don't always have to say what they mean. Um, you know, they can say something, but again, through the tone of voice or through their expression, um, you get kind of a, a sense that, that maybe, um, you know, they're not saying the whole truth or you have to read between the lines a little bit. So from that standpoint, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's really freeing for us and, and allows us to do a lot more um, than we were able to do in the past. And then, you know, from a, an art standpoint um, and a technology standpoint, being able to build a really immersive city that has a lot of atmosphere, um, that's filled with things like fog and really dramatic lighting um, with, you know, kind of audio all around you in order to really capture the sense of a, a living city, um, I think is, is also, uh, you know, one way we can kind of tell the story of the player's experience. Um, and then lastly, you know, the, the original obviously had, had a ton of memorable moments and all those are, are delivered on again here. But one of our big mantras and, and big marching orders for the team was every mission needed a big kind of memorable set piece. Um, that doesn't mean a, a big over-the-top moment necessarily, but something that you take away from every mission that you're never going to forget. And we were able to to really deliver on those, I think, again, because of all the advances and kind of just even how we build games and the technology since the original was, was released. In the original, Norman is waiting for Tommy in the bar. We switched that because we felt like Tommy's a mobster on the run. He's going to get to the, the diner early. He's going to sit with his back, you know, as close to a wall as he can and keep his eye on the door, right? So, and that's stuff that we learned from doing research, you know, into the mob on Mafia 3. They always want to have a clear look at the door. Um, and if Tommy's being hunted, he definitely would do that. So he was the one that reached out to, to Norman and set up the meet, he'd get there first. So we made some tweaks like that. We changed, you know, kind of which information, like in those conversations, who knows what, you know, there's things that Norman knows that Tommy doesn't. Um, and vice versa, and, and some of those are slightly different just because of the flow of, of kind of the conversations. This sequence, you know, underwent a lot of work, mostly just because, you know, we wanted to make sure that a lot of the characters were represented and there's some nice little story beats here. As you go and you talk to various characters and you're kind of reminded of their role in the story and their relationship to Tommy, uh, but we wanted this to be a little bit celebratory. But even here, there's a moment where, you know, you don't really get the sense that Sam's kind of a ladies' man in the original, but it was supposed to be part of his character. So, you know, just even adding uh, bits like that, just little little moments where we can help develop the characters. It's something that was very difficult to do in 2002. We can do a lot more of now. I think this is my, my favorite scene in the in the, the bit of the, of the chunk that I played, just like the, the way the skybox and the lighting hits, like it's just such a, a beautiful moment. Yeah, we, we, you know, again, learning from Mafia 3, we had a lot of dynamic lighting in Mafia 3 where the, the day-night cycle would just go on and, we, we didn't always curate kind of what time of day it was. Almost every single mission in, you know, Mafia, the definitive edition is curated from a lighting standpoint. So we know what time of day it is. We know what the weather is. We can control all that stuff. And I think, again, that just leads to, you know, a, a greater sense of atmosphere. It allows us to really control the pace and the motion of the game um, and tell the story that we want to tell. Um, and make sure that it looks as good as it can possibly look. Yeah, it, it really is like how you imagined the game being in your head. Now, now here it is, right, right on your screen, which is which is fantastic. And you know, it, it's fantastic to see this all come together. You guys are taking a beloved game, beloved characters, trying to pay tribute, but but also elevating things. It's a large undertaking. And I guess as we approach that launch date, what are you most proud of with Mafia Definitive Edition? Well, so first I would say it's not, you know, from my perspective, it wasn't just a large undertaking. It was also one that had a lot of uh, responsibility attached to it. There was a sense mm -hmm. of responsibility that we had to the, the, the members of the original team that are still, you know, members of Hangar 13 to make sure that we were allowing them to do this justice, but also, you know, to the fans, right? I mean, the, the fans of the Mafia franchise are, are uh, very passionate. They're very vocal. Um, and we appreciate that. And we know that, you know, we're, we're taking this beloved game and we're remaking it. We want to make sure that we do it justice. So that, 
that I think was was kind of top of mind for us all along. Um, in terms of where I'm most proud, I'm extremely proud that the team was able to um, finish the game uh, in the mid midst of a global pandemic. You know, we moved to a work from home structure uh, back in March. And at that time, we didn't have most of our face facial animation in the game. Um, there were missions that were still incomplete. Uh, there were set pieces that were still being worked on. There were chunks of the city that hadn't been arted up yet. Um, there were huge swaths of sound um, that, that hadn't been added. Uh, you know, the cinematics hadn't been scored yet. I mean, there was just a, a tremendous amount of work. Um, the localization, all the translations hadn't been done. Uh, just a huge amount of work that, that had to be done between March and, and um, where we're at today. And despite most of the team working from home and, you know, dealing with all the challenges of working from home during a pandemic and jug juggling family commitments and, and work, um, the, the team really, really came through. And, and I'm, I'm amazed every day by what they were able to accomplish. Um, and then the fact that, that we were able to stay true to the, uh, you know, I believe the tone um, and the themes of the original game, I think that really comes through. Um, so I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of all the little touches and details we've been able to add. Um, I think that there's, you know, more to Polly as a character um, in the definitive edition than maybe came through in the original. And I'm, I'm proud of that. There's more to Sarah as a character than maybe came through in the original. Um, there's a little bit more nuance to the war between um, the, the Salieri crime family and the Morello crime family. And again, a lot of that is because we're able to tell the story with more detail and more nuance than they were, you know, back in, in 2002. Um, and then the team's ability to focus on the big picture, you know, things like vistas and making sure that uh, the city feels alive when you take a step back all the way down to the smallest details, like how many stars are on you know an american flag at this time period uh is, is truly remarkable and I'm, I'm i'm amazed by that you know every day too That's right yeah it's it's an incredible achievement and i love that you guys were able to to check all the boxes and then add even more flourishes and it's it is remarkable given the, the situation and the year so kudos to you and the team thank you so much for your time today hayden and uh we are all looking forward to mafia definitive edition hitting store shelves on september 25th oh well, yeah thank you so much thanks for taking the time and there you have it, guys and girls. Tommy's Tale is shaping up to be an amazing adventure. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest and greatest from the Mafia franchise. And until next time, we'll see you later.